get your thinking caps on. It's time for Jessica's C Sharp Programming Tutorials, brought to you by Silver Drake Productions. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of Jesco's Programming Tutorials. Today, we are going to focus on using speech synthesis in addition to various controls with uh, WPF applications. However, before we get started, I do want to uh, say that a really good friend of mine, Magius96, today marks his two-year anniversary on YouTube. So if you've never seen his channels, please check it out. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and start a new project. <clears throat> WPF application, let's go ahead and name this uh, Speech Tutorial. Let's make it simple, easy to the point. Alright, so for this project, uh, we do have to do a little bit of UI design, and we also need three separate windows. So let's go ahead and add these, and we'll make it really simple. We'll just keep them named as window 1, 2, and 3. There we go, and main window, we are actually going to change the size of it, and we are going to use a combo box in the main window, so let's just try to line this up to be about center and extend roughly about here, there we go. And then, no, we don't want to go to the CS yet. I'm going to use a text box. And... This is window one. And I speak with an American accent. You'll understand why I'm doing this later. Uh, later in the video, that is. Alright, so now we want this to be read-only. You don't want anyone to make any changes to it. Alright, perfect. Oh, we need to change the height and width of this. So about there. And one other thing is Windows Startup Location Center Owner. Now we want to copy this and basically do the same thing for Windows 2 and 3. The only difference is what the text box says. Two, and I speak with a Japanese accent. Yes, we are going to use the U.S. English, Japanese, and British English voicings. So if you don't have those uh, speech packs installed, you're not going to get this. It's actually going to throw an exception, which I'll actually explain how to circumvent that uh, later in this video. And I am window 3. British accent. Alright, there we go. There is one other thing here. We need an event for Windows 1, 2, and 3 for on the grid itself, which is a God-focused event. And then we also need to name text box, and we will name it simply text box. Perfect. That's Windows 3. Got focus, no event handler, name is text box. We'll save that demo and got focus, no event handler, name text box. 
All right, so window one, two, and three. That UI is completely done. The main Windows UI is also completely done. So we'll go ahead and save and exit out of that. <clears throat> now, inside the main window, we are going to have two separate methods. Uh, private void. Uh, let's name this one to be combo items. Alright, so, whoops, there is one thing we forgot to do in the main window. We have to name this guy, which we'll name it Combo Box. Alright, so Combo Box dot items dot add American accent Combo Box dot Items dot add Japanese accent and lastly combo box dot items dot add and this one will contain British accent. All right, and just to show what we've done so far, let's go ahead and run this application. So as you can see. Oh, we forgot to do a step. Let me rephrase that. I forgot to do something, which would be combo items. Need to add that to the main method. Oh, the initialize. All right, there we go. Each one is there. Perfect. The next one, the next method is private void selection chain whoa no 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 let's do this easier so we're we're going to create an event here and let's do it the simplistic way just by using properties and we want selection changed events and there we go all right there we go just so that the event's already created for us. We don't actually have to create the whole event. It's all done in the back end code. All right, so here, if combo box dot selected index equals zero, then we want something. If combo box dot selection index equals one, we want to do something here. And last but certainly not least, combo box dot selected index equals two. Then we want to do something. All right. So let's do var window one equals window one dot get window new window one done. And then we want to do window one dot show. And it's basically cut and paste here as well. With slight differences. And window three. All right, so we are done with the main windows code behind. Let's go ahead and save that as well. All right, so now in the got focused, here's where it gets a little bit different. <coughs> so we need to add a reference here. And that reference is system.speech. All right, there we go. Let's add our using statement. That would help. Speech.synthesis.
speech inciter speech equals new speech synthesizer. All right, so speech dot select voice and speech dot speak text box dot text. All right, so let's go ahead and circumvent for the errors. Try. And catch. Box that show. You do not have the correct speech pack installed. Then we also want to do ex dot message, and this is basically going to be the same for all three. One, two, and three. Let's add speech synthesis to each one. All right, so for US, <clears throat> the name that you have to use in order to select the correct voice would be Microsoft Zero Desktop. Done. For Japanese, it's Microsoft Haruka Desktop. And for British, Assuming you want to use the female voicing, that is. Uh, Microsoft Helena Desktop. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this. And when you focus... Oh, see the exception here? Uh, apparently I selected the wrong voice one since I have British installed. Alright, so let's take a look here. For Great Bit Britain, it's actually Hazel, not Helena. I believe Helena is actually India then. Alright, as you can see, these are all the ones that I have installed. So, Hazel. All right, so now I can actually demo the application. I will actually make it so that the speech will come through the headset, or sorry, the onboard microphone versus the headset. All right, so here we go. I'll start this up. Might help if I actually had the volume up, so let's try that again. This is Indo -ni, and I speak with a Japanese accent. This is Window 3, and I speak with a British accent. And we'll go back to American. This is Window 1, and I speak with an American accent. Alright, so there you have it. Um, a like, a scribe, a comment, subscribe actually, sorry, uh, would be very helpful to me. Uh, this program will, well, the code anyways, will actually be put in a GitHub and available in the link below. Alright, well, thank you for watching, and you guys have yourself a great day.